It's completely mind-boggling how fast progress is going at Starbase recently. In addition to the series of stress tests taking place at the launch site, SpaceX will not only have a pair of starships, but several others are expected to be ready before this colossal spacecraft embarks on its second orbital flight. First, on July 18th, SpaceX performed the first cryogenic-proof test of another super-heavy rocket that could prepare Starship to orbit if all tests go smoothly. More specifically, SpaceX performed the proof test on a prototype identified as Booster 10. Note that the engineers have also been working on Booster 9, so it's unclear which of the two will perform the flight this year, but it all depends on which of the two passes all pre-flight tests. In fact, on June 18th, Booster 9 was transported from the Mega Bay assembly site using purpose-built vehicles called called SPM transporters to the rocket garden. There are also concerns about B9 not having a hot stage ring. Is this some sort of premonition that B10 will be the next star? I can't fully confirm this, but it might be. How about you? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But back to Booster 10. During the cryogenic test, engineers loaded its massive propellant tanks with ultra-cold liquid nitrogen, mimicking the conditions the rocket would face during an actual launch. Cryogenic temperature are employed to increase the density of the propellants, allowing more fuel to be stored within the limited tank space and providing greater thrust for the ascent. The cryogenic proof test was a critical assessment to evaluate the rocket's structural integrity under extreme conditions. As the liquid nitrogen filled the tanks, the rocket underwent intense stress, simulating the forces and pressures experienced during liftoff. The test aimed to identify potential weak points in the rocket's structure and ensure it could withstand the rigors of space travel. The nearly 70 meter tall rocket was tested at Massey's testing location, which is around 15 minutes down the road from Starbase. Just witnessing this scene, do you remember that on this day, two years ago on July 19th of 2021, the first Starship booster static fire of BN3? Somewhere around this time, Elon Musk and SpaceX dropped the BN, or booster number designations, and simply began referring to BN3 as Booster 3. This naming scheme appears to be the status quo going forward. Sadly, BN3 was then retired. How oh, time flies, right? In any case, it's still a good memory. Next up, let's move on over to the launch pad. SpaceX is testing not only the water deluge system, but also the smaller shower called FireX. In this video, you can clearly see that FireX was activated under test conditions. FireX is dedicated to managing any fires under the pad with pipes running throughout the OLM. Firex uses a mixture of water and gaseous nitrogen. In this way, the flames are deprived of the oxygen that feeds them. Furthermore, the accumulation of oxygen and methane is also to avoid the creation of an explosive mix in the area of the pad that can easily be ignited. Firex has already been seen at work before many static fire tests. SpaceX will use both of these systems to protect the launch pad on a real flight because they they serve different purposes. FireX clears out combustible gases that may collect beneath the engines before ignition to prevent accidental detonation. The upside-down shower head protects these steel plates, which protects the concrete pad foundation from the engine exhaust. The tank farm is also in the process of maintenance. The newest tank was installed at the Deluge farm. It's expected to be tested a few more times before a real static fire test occurs. Interestingly, we have some road closures for today, the 20th of July 2023. Here's hoping that we will have more special things to report. After all, it won't be long before they test all these systems with a live booster test fire at this work pace. It's amazing witnessing the launch site rebuild progress over the last few months. SpaceX's Starship rocket holds ambitious goals for future space missions, including crewed missions to the moon, Mars, and beyond. As the company continues to refine the rocket's design and safety features, successful tests like the water deluge system contribute to the confidence and reliability of the overall launch process. As the company progresses towards upcoming launches and missions, the world watches with anticipation, eager to witness the next chapter in the history of space exploration. Indeed, the success of Starship is becoming more and more important. The U.S. Space Force last week announced plans to increase the number of providers in the National Security Launch Program. Officials said July 19th the decision was driven by a projected growth in demand
demand for satellite launches and concerns about a shortage of heavy lift rockets later this decade. The manifest is growing, so in phase three, we're refining our strategies, said Colonel Douglas Pentecost, Deputy Program Executive Officer of Assured Access to Space at the Space Systems Command. During a call with reporters, Pentecost said the next procurement of launch services, known as National Security Space Launch Phase 3, is intended to ensure the Space Force has access to launch supply at competitive pricing. Under the dual-lane NSSL strategy, the plan is to select multiple medium-lift rockets to launch lower-orbit missions, and three heavy-lift launch providers in an effort to reduce the DOD's dependence on SpaceX and United Launch Alliance. Pentecost said the Space Force estimates it could launch as many as 88 missions in the 2027 to 2032 timeframe. The NSSL Phase 3 has a Lane 1 procurement aimed at smaller launches that fly to lower orbits. Lane 2 requires heavy lift launchers that can fly payloads to nine reference orbits that include some of the most demanding DOD and intelligence agency missions. During the NSSL Phase 3 contract period, there will be growing commercial demand for launch, fueled by mega constellations like Amazon's Project Kuiper, Pentagon said. Another concern is what's been happening in the small launch sector when companies that one day are burning bright then declare bankruptcy, he said. You never know. The Phase 3 strategy is designed to basically guarantee capacity for national security launch and to secure competitive pricing, he said. We're trying to lock down 80 to 90 missions that we're looking to launch over the time frame. Of the 58 missions in Lane 2, 7, with 5 of which are GPS satellite launches to medium Earth orbit and 2 direct to geostationary orbit launches, are being set aside for a third provider. The highest scoring competitor in Lane 2 will get 60% of the other 51 missions, and the second best score will get 40%. All three Lane 2 winners will be eligible for up to $100 million a year in funding to pay for military unique requirements, such as having both East and West Coast launch sites, vertical integration facilities, and giving the Space Force access to their commercial launch data. The Space Force initially planned to award five-year contracts to two Lane 2 providers, but later realized it needed to support a third provider for national security and economic reasons. Companies seeking to challenge current NSSL providers SpaceX and United Launch Alliance do not necessarily have to have operational rockets by the time contracts are awarded in 2024. Pentecost said a launch company with a new rocket in development can still be selected if it submits a credible plan showing its vehicle will be ready to fly by October of 2026. That is the start of the 2027 fiscal year, when Phase 3 missions have to be ordered. If any of the selected launch companies are not able to fly by that date, the missions will be reassigned to one of the other Lane 2 providers. A new entrant, like Blue Origin for example, could be awarded a Lane 2 contract on the assumption that its new Glenn rocket will be operational and certified by October of 2026. If the vehicle is not ready, the Space Force will assign fiscal year 2027 missions to the other two providers until Blue Origin's vehicle is certified. Missions will be assigned every year in October during the five-year contract. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. Also, very sorry, there's a little bit of construction in the background, so please bear with me for the next couple of days. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.